Many people are using the FaithFi app to help provide the wisdom, community, and money management to stay on track, financially speaking. To date, over 37,000 members are using its digital envelope system, participating in our community forums, and engaging in virtual workshops. And one of the most convenient features is the ability to keep all your accounts in one place for an easy at a glance view. You can choose from one of three options depending on your management style, and it's available on desktop or mobile. Go to faithfi.com and click app to get started. In marriage, husbands and wives will disagree on many things, and sometimes the issue is giving. Hi, I'm Rob West. Giving can be an especially difficult topic for some couples because it involves two issues that are often contentious in their own right, money and faith. Ron Blue joins us today with advice for couples who disagree on giving. Then it's on to your calls at 800-525-7000. That's 800-525-7000. This is Faith and Finance, biblical wisdom for your financial journey. Well, if you're new to Faith and Finance, you may not know that Ron Blue is the founder of Kingdom Advisors, our parent organization. He's also the author of a shelf full of books on biblical finance. He's one of my mentors and a great friend. Ron, great to have you back. Oh, always good, Rob. Looking forward to it again. Ron, now we're getting into the time of year when folks begin thinking about year-end giving, and maybe for some couples, giving in general has been a point of contention all year. Uh, you've had some personal experience with this that's helped shape how you counsel couples with this challenge. Share that with us. Well, you know, I, I have found in counseling people that this is a big area of potential disagreement, and Judy became a Christian two years before I did. And uh, she mentioned tithing, and I about went through the roof. Uh, (laughs) There was no way. I earned that money. It was my money. Yes. And Judy, very wisely, uh, she didn't say anything about it, uh, and she didn't ask again, but she lived out a life that was so compelling uh, that eventually it led me to the Lord, and then tithing and giving became a normal part of our financial life for sure. But, yes. but we had some rough, rough moments there for a couple of years. Oh, I can imagine. But obviously that made a profound impact on you, ultimately you coming to Christ. And I'd love to know how her decision not to press this issue of giving now informs how you counsel other couples. Well, many times if I'm asked this question a lot when I speak, uh, and you know, unfortunately, it's typically the uh, wife will come up and say, you know, I'm saved, my husband's not. Yes. Uh, and he doesn't want to tithe, and I feel like it's biblical to tithe. And my counsel is, well, your relationship, I believe, is the most important thing. Hmm. Uh, so I don't think it's the tithe that's the real issue. It is how you demonstrate a life in Christ. And uh, I I would not, you know, the Bible says to be mutually submissive to one another. So in a marriage relationship, I would tend to say, go to the lowest common denominator when it yes. comes to this particular topic. It's not true of all topics, but it is a, that's my counsel on this. Just because of my personal experience, I'm not sure I'd have ever considered becoming a believer had Judy not uh, backed off on that issue with me. Yeah, that's powerful. God's a plan, of course, is oneness in marriage, and this issue could actually interfere with them hearing the gospel, and I know uh, that was true in your situation. Uh, Ron, what about when both spouses are believers, and yet they still disagree about giving? How would you counsel them? Well, there are several ways that you could do it. One is that you could separate out the amounts that are given. Now I'm talking probably beyond the tithe. Uh, okay. My own personal belief is that the tithe is the beginning point of giving. So let's assume people are giving beyond that. Uh, probably the most practical thing that I've seen where there's real disagreement is where uh, a husband and wife, maybe they have things that they agree on, fine, but where they disagree that they set up an amount uh, in each of their uh, accounts, we'll call it, uh, where you give the uh, dissenting spouse an opportunity to give to the things that he or she really feels passionate about. Mm-hmm. So I think, again, I'll come back to the relationship, and I think that that's the most important thing. 
Uh, so it's not not a fight, and it's not I give in, therefore you lose. Yes, It's how can we have a win-win situation where we're both doing that. And I, I believe it's very legitimate for husbands and wives to have different interests uh, due to experience and due to uh, different personalities. And so, uh, <laughs> you know, I know that when, when certain prayer letters come to our house, I know what Judy's response is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we're going to well, get to that. I love your approach because it allows us each to bring our own wiring and passions to the table and yet keep the relationship at the center, which you've said multiple times, and I think that's absolutely the key. Ron, we're out of time. Thanks for giving us some counsel in this area. We're grateful. Well, that was good counsel that you just gave, Rob, so follow it. Thank you. (laughs) Thanks, Ron. We'll be back with your questions. 800-525-7000. This is Faith and Finance, biblical wisdom for your financial decisions. We'll be right back. As a faithful listener of this program, you know that there's life-changing financial wisdom in God's Word. And FaithFi is here to help you and millions of others learn to be good and faithful stewards. As a nonprofit organization, we rely on help from monthly FaithFi patrons, supporters of this mission, to help us continue and expand our outreach. Has God provided financial answers for you through this ministry? If so, consider becoming a monthly FaithFi patron. Visit faithfi.com and click Give. What's most important to you when it comes to choosing your financial advisor? Someone who's aligned with your biblical values? How about someone who will take the time to explain your options? Certified Kingdom Advisors are professionals who meet high standards in competence and integrity and have been trained to offer biblical financial advice. To find a Certified Kingdom Advisor in your area, visit faithfi.com and click Find a CKA. You're listening to Faith and Finance, where we talk about how we handle God's resources. How are you using God's resources? We're talking about it, and the lines are open to take your calls and questions. 800-525-7000 is the number to call. Let's head to Chicago, Illinois we go. Hi, Andrew. Go ahead, sir. Yes, I uh, I have about $80,000 in a savings account right now that's growing about 4% right now. And I owe 160 currently on a house, which is at 2.2%. And I'm paying about $300 more uh, per month in a mortgage. So I'm going to pay it off within 10, 10, faster than 10 years quicker than if I were to do the full 30. Would you say me keeping my 80 in my bank account and making 4% is smarter? Or should I take that 80 and put it in to the home? And mind you, I do have a save. I do have uh, an emergency fund. And, um, and, and I have another savings account that's for emergencies. Okay. And what about long-term investments? I mean, are you, uh, saving and contributing to a retirement account? Yeah, I'm doing about 6% each paycheck into a 401k and some small little, uh, 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 stocks that I buy here and there. Okay. What is your age, Andrew? I am uh, 35. Okay. Are you single or married? Married. Okay. And is your does your wife work? My wife works as well. Okay. And is she also contributing to a retirement plan? Yes. She's on the exact same plan that I am. Uh, we actually, uh, only my income, we actually use for just expenses, our living expenses and, and entertainment. And 100% of her a paycheck just gets funneled in this $80,000 that's just been growing pretty significantly. We've been blessed to be able to do that. Yeah, that's great. So why are you prioritizing so much outside the retirement plan, just in taxable savings versus bumping that those retirement contributions up to 10 or 15% of your pay? I, I could. I, I don't see why yeah. I couldn't. Um, actually, yeah. it's been just more of laziness. Uh, yeah. I just have... I need to do it. I've been told to do it. I, I yeah. haven't done that piece yet. Okay. Yeah, no worries. Uh, well, the good news is, I mean, at least you're getting 4% a year on that 80000 But I think, you know, your opportunity, you and your wife, 
is as you define enough, and I think that's key, it's not about the mindless accumulation of wealth. And, you know, I think you're in a situation where because you all have limited your lifestyle, you're on track to be debt free. You've obviously got a lot of surplus because you're living modestly. I mean, you guys are ripe for an advisor who could really guide you through from a, a value standpoint, a conversation about, hey, what's God doing in your life? And how can money be a tool to accomplish his purposes? And, you know, what's important to you all in terms of saving and what's the lifestyle he's called you to and what does that translate into in terms of an ultimate goal for retirement savings because we don't want to over accumulate because if you've capped your lifestyle and uh, you know you're you're eventually debt free or on your way to being debt free then it's really just a matter of defining the give and the grow buckets and determining how much is enough for each. And once you establish a finish line for your long-term retirement savings, then you can accelerate your giving. Um, you know, and that's that's going to be a blast. So I would encourage if you don't have one to connect with an advisor, we'd recommend a certified kingdom advisor uh, there in Chicago who could really help you think through all of this. But just at a high level, what I would say is, you know, I'd love for you just given how much you all cash surplus you're throwing off on a monthly basis, I'd love to see you prioritize uh, as long as it's within you know, the confines of a, of a plan and some retirement planning, I'd love to see you prioritize getting that into a tax deferred environment. So I would quickly increase your percentage of withholdings going into the retirement plan and again, then do some planning. Uh, with regard to the 80,000, do you all have any other kind of medium, short or medium term goals? I mean, are you looking to buy a bigger house? You need to replace a car? I mean, are there any things on the horizon that you need to do with that? No, I honestly, we have two great cars that are paid off all with less than five years on them. Um, okay. Yes, my wife and I, of course, who doesn't want a bigger house, but with the interest yeah. rates being so high, not that I'm afraid of taking a little bit of more interest to get a better quality home. Um, it's definitely been talked about, but it's not a high, high priority. We're definitely looking, but not like yeah. we're not, we don't need, you know. That yeah, makes yeah got it. Okay. Well, I mean, again, I like the trajectory you're on. I would connect with an advisor. I'd think deeply about your values and how that informs your goals. I'd answer the question, how much is enough? You've already answered that for your lifestyle because you're living on your income only. Uh, I would answer that for the long-term accumulation. And then based on that, I would set a target on how much you need to be putting aside every month to reach that goal. And then I would increase uh, your um, re retirement withholdings. And then I'd probably start funding Roth IRAs out of that 80000 for you and your wife. You guys could each put in 6500 this year, and then you could turn around and do it again next year. And, and then, you know, once you have you know, surplus beyond that, then I think it's start. It's time to start thinking about, well, maybe we ought to start accelerating the mortgage payoff. Because even though it's a low interest rate, there's a non-financial win of you being out of debt, which is just being unencumbered and being debt-free. And that's going to throw off even more cash on a monthly basis because now you don't have that mortgage payment. And, you know, now you can decide, do we give that away? What are we doing? So um, I would say that would be my priorities with the 80000 is first uh, funding Roth IRAs this year and next, and then, um, you know, perhaps looking at accelerating the mortgage payoff. And where do you, where do you find these advisors? Cause I've looked before and I've never been successful of actually finding one of these. Okay. Yeah. So just go to our website, faithfi.com. That's faithfi.com. Uh, and then at the top of the page, it says find a CKA and that stands for certified kingdom advisor. It's the only recognized and accepted financial services industry designation for men and women who have met really high standards around character and competence, but also pastor and client references. They've signed a statement of faith, but even more than that, they've been trained to bring a biblical worldview of financial decision-making. So they'll be able to think about your values as believers and how that should inform your decisions with money being a tool to accomplish God's purposes. Excellent. Well, thank you for uh, answering my question. I appreciate it. <laughs> Absolutely, Andrew. God bless you, my friend. 800-525-7000 uh, is the number to call. We do have some lines open today. We'd love to hear from you as we take your questions on anything financial. Uh, let's head to South Pittsburgh, Tennessee. Uh, Kathy, go right ahead. Uh, yes, Rob. Uh, I'm kind of financially here, there, and everywhere. Um, I'm 66, widowed, retired. I have one debt, uh, which is an RV trailer that I live in. I pay $200 extra a month on my payment on that. Um, I have 
$25,000 in savings, uh, $16,000 in a 401k that's basically kind of dormant. I have $96,000 in an annuity. I have $5,000 in a Roth 401k. And uh, then I have uh, three term life policies that, you know, I was kind of wondering what I should do with. So that's kind of, yeah. like I said, a kind of scattered. But a financial uh, person, I, I called, to, you know, get some advice. He said on the uh, the annuity, he said, you can do whatever you want to. With He didn't expound on that, even though I questioned him. So like I said, I'm kind of, I'm kind of scattered right now. Got it. Okay, that's really helpful background, Kathy. So let's do this. I'm about to have to take a break, but I've got all of those notes down. And um, when we come back, if you can hold the line, I'll give you my thoughts on where we go from here and see if we can get you pointed in the right direction. This is Faith and Finance. I'm Rob West. We've got a few lines open, although the calls are coming in quick. 800-525-7000. You can give us a call. We'll be back with much more just around the corner. Stay with us. We are grateful for support from Praxis Mutual Funds. Praxis Mutual Funds has seven impact strategies that are designed to create positive real-world change. More information is available at PraxisMutualFunds.com. The fund's investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses are contained in the prospectus and summary prospectus. This and other information is available at PraxisMutualFunds.com. Investments involve risk. Principal loss is possible. Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Are you looking for a financial professional who aligns with your biblical values? Certified Kingdom Advisors are trusted financial, legal, or accounting professionals who have completed a rigorous certification program to ensure they provide biblically wise financial advice as part of their practice. You can find a local CKA professional in your area by going to faithfi.com and clicking Find a CKA. Grateful to have you with us today on Faith and Finance. I'm Rob West. We're taking your calls and questions today. Just two lines remaining, 800-525-7000. Just before the break, we were talking to Kathy. She's in Tennessee. Uh, Kathy was sharing that she's a 66-year-old widow. Uh, She has uh, some debt, only one debt. Uh, on her RV trailer. She's actually sending beyond the minimum scheduled payment, so trying to get that paid off, at which point she'll be completely debt-free. She's retired, has some savings in 401k accounts, uh, Roth and traditional. Uh, she's also got a $96,000 annuity and some term life insurance. Just kind of wondering where should she go from here? Um, Kathy, do you have a, a written spending plan or can you give me a sense of just kind of how your expenses match up with your income and whether you have anything left at the end of the month? Really, I, I will buy things from Amazon and uh, pay that off every month. And then I, I have minimal, you know, utility bills. There's okay. don't use much uh, in yeah. that way. What would you say you but spend the, uh, on a typical month? I would say probably if, uh, maybe a thousand to twelve hundred dollars a month. Okay, and is your only income source currently your Social Security? I also have a retirement from the state of Texas, which is okay. only about a thousand dollars a month. So I make about twenty two fifty a month. Okay, so you're typically putting, uh, you know, once you take out the 200 extra you're sending to pay down the RV trailer, uh, you're having, you have about $1,000 a month left over typically? Yes, sir. It just, it just kind of ranges on what I do for the grandkids. <laughs> yeah, I, I certainly understand that. Okay, and you said the 96000 you have the ability to pull that out uh, sometime next year? Uh, he told me in September I could do what I wanted this this okay. coming September, but I All didn't right. really know what he meant by that. Yeah. Well, what happens is with an annuity, your money is locked up for a period of time, meaning uh, you can't get it back 
by transferring it out. If it's if it was put in pre-tax, you could roll it out to an IRA, which would give you unlimited flexibility on what you do with it in terms of investing it. But usually there's a surrender period where if you pull it out during that surrender period, you have to pay a penalty. And what he's saying probably is that come September, you could pull that money out and roll it out to an IRA or another type of account, and there wouldn't be any penalty to it. And so then you'd have your full $96,000 at that point to do something else with. What is your primary goal, just to make sure you're being a wise steward of what you have, or was there something else specific that's concerning you? Well, nothing, nothing in concern. Uh, I, you know, of course, I want to be able to leave my kids, some, you know, some money. Uh, yeah. And of course, you know, pay for whatever needs that I might have as I get older. But beyond that, I, I would love to be able to buy some property. Uh, but with the way the economy is right now, I'm not too sure about that. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Well, what I would probably recommend, Kathy, is that you connect with a financial advisor. It doesn't sound like you have a relationship with an advisor currently. Is that right? Uh, No, other than we need you to do this and this is what you can do, but not in a sound way. Okay, good. Well, I think what would be helpful is to connect with a certified kingdom advisor there in Tennessee. That's just an industry designation for those professional advisors that have met high standards and character and competence. They've uh, been trained to bring a biblical worldview. They've had a pastor and client reference, and they've been in the business at least 10 years. So they've met high standards, but they really will be aligned with your faith values, and that's key. And you could find, I'd say, two or three certified kingdom advisors there in Tennessee. Tennessee to interview, find the one that's the best fit. And uh, you can do that at faithfi.com. If you're comfortable on the web, go to faithfi.com and click find a CKA. And what I would probably recommend is that you do, in fact, pull this out of the annuity unless you knew you wanted to leave it there and the advisor could advise you on that. The only reason you'd want to leave it is if you'd really just like to have a guaranteed return and you don't want to have to take any risk and you just want to leave that to the insurance company. But you'd have a lot more flexibility to buy a piece of property or invest it uh, if it was in an IRA. Um, And so that's why I'd recommend that perhaps this advisor uh, pulls the 401k money into an IRA, uh, the Roth 401k into a Roth IRA, and then rolls the annuity money out into an IRA as well, assuming it's put in pre-tax. And then they can help you develop a plan to manage that, minimizing the risk, but trying to grow it reasonably so that it's there if you need it, if you had an unexpected expense or you needed to go into nursing care or to be able to leave to your heirs or to charity or ministry. And so I think having that plan with a trusted advisor that you can call that, um, you know, will uh, manage this for you would give you a lot of peace of mind. And then the good news is you're adding a thousand dollars a month to that, you know, or or thereabout to that saving. So you got plenty of cushion. In fact, you could, you know, be do a little more giving or even invest more just based on the fact that you've already built up plenty of money in that, in that savings, given that you're only spending, you know, $1,500 a month or so. Uh, on your expenses. So that would mean my best advice is to connect with an advisor. And again, you can do that at faithfi.com. Kathy, we appreciate your call today. May the Lord bless you. Quickly to Columbus. John, I've got just a minute left. Go ahead. Hey, Rob. Well, I'm to your stuff all the time. I appreciate um, all your, um, Thank all your you. advice. I've listened to a lot. Um, two questions I have. It's a two-part question. The first one I have is, um, so I have a, a car note that I got a car my finance last year, well, 2022, and um, the interest rate like 10.6, and I have something else for me a, a refi uh, for at eight percent, and uh, but it's a longer term on the loan, and uh, it's a cheaper monthly payment, but um, it's a longer note. Uh, and I was wondering if it made sense to go that route because you do get a little money back from your uh, maintenance coverages on the vehicle, and I was thinking. That was the only thing that sounded pretty attractive to get, you know, some money back out of the loan. Yeah. Put back for a rainy day fund and stuff like that. Yeah, here's my thought. And unfortunately, I'm out of time. Uh, I don't like you extending that term. I do want you to get the interest rate down. I would look to refinance it at a lower rate, but with the same term or at least 
uh, make the payment schedule such that you won't extend the term at all. I want to get you out of debt, not get money uh, for a rainy day. So I'd look at refinancing, but don't extend the term is my best advice. God bless you, John. And that's going to do it for us today. I really appreciate your taking time to listen to this program and to committing the principles we talk about each time to your financial life. You see, God's plan isn't difficult, but it does take discipline. And I hope we can encourage you along the way as you listen to this program. Incidentally, if you've been helped by what you've heard here, would you mind helping us? This broadcast, the FaithFi app, and the other great resources we provide wouldn't be possible without the financial support we receive from listeners like you. If you're not yet one of our financial partners but would like to be, would you visit our website, faithfi.com, and then click the Give button to sign up. We'd certainly be grateful. In the meantime, please set an alarm on your phone and make plans to join us again next time for another edition of Faith and Finance. Faith and Finance is provided by FaithFi and listeners like you.